Good morning, friends. I wanted to clear up some confusion on the difference between worm tea, worm leachate, and worm we. That's one that we don't hear too often. When I started doing this uh, back in 2009, the lady I bought, this is the um, can of worms, uh, it was. It's made in Australia. Uh, the company who uh, uh, produces them or um, markets them, rather, is uh, Tumbleweed. And uh, the lady who I bought from, uh, Bernie Morrow, lives in Sorrento, Florida, which is only about an hour or so from me. It's a little bit more out in the country than Windermere is or Orlando. Um, but anyway, when I when I bought this, she said, when you start out, you're going to have your well and you're going to have your bottom layer. And then after a certain period of time, when you fill that bottom layer with all of your food scraps, I had a, a block of cocoa core in there to begin with and the two pounds of worms. And then after about a month or so, I had it filled with scraps, um, food scraps, etc. She never mentioned anything about uh, adding uh, shredded cardboard or paper or anything. But, you know, she said you can put a damp uh, paper on top that'll keep them, you know, happy. Then put the next layer on and then start feeding that layer. And as you do, the worms will move up. However, her suggestion was... Once a week, these babies need to have about a quart, or you might think of it as a liter, a little less than, and you pour it over the whole thing, and then the excess runs out this spigot. She called it worm tea. So I called it worm tea because that was what I had heard and that's what I knew. And then, of course, the following month, you move up to your top layer here and you start feeding it and supposedly the worms move up. By the end of that third month, you're supposed to be able to harvest this bottom, take out the castings. They should be ready. You know, coax the worms out. I have to do mine by hand. And then that... Uh, level, that layer, gets moved over the other two layers. I only have two on there now because I just did it. But whatever you have gets moved to the top and then that process begins again. So I happened to run across an article. Oh, I, I did want to say that when I first started out doing um, Garden What You've Got, I had uh, a young lady uh, who was a graduate of uh, Arizona University who sent me a note uh, really um, chastising me for using the worm T uh, versus leachate, which I really hadn't heard at that point a few years ago, and um, told me that I should um, stop trying to tell people what to do because I obviously didn't know. <laughs> I thought, wow, that was brutal. So, of course, I, being me, I sent an apology note to her and said, gee, you know, I'm really sorry, but this was what I had heard. And that thank you for educating me as to that it is called leachate and not tea. And that settled her feathers. And she wrote back and said, well, sorry if I sounded it too uh, um, bossy. <laughs> so she, I'm sure she isn't one of my followers. So that all, all is good. So um, anyway, that was a long story short, but I happened to run across an article from Tumbleweed. Unfortunately, my, uh, my printer kind of printed it over a bit, and so the first few letters are off. But I wanted to go over this with you, and it really, it, it explains what worm we, W-E-E, -E, the term and it says that it's often used by growers to describe the liquid that is shed from a worm farm as it breaks down organic materials such as uh, kitchen scraps. 
The worms need moisture to keep their skin in good condition, but they also excrete water with various nutrients dissolved in it, much like human urine. The word we gradually drips from the bottom of the trays and is very concentrated source of nutrients that generally need to be diluted with water before it's used in your garden. A good rule of thumb is about one per part worm we to 10 parts water, in which case it ends up looking something like weak tea. So now that I'm running my worm bins dryer, I used to put one uh, quart in there. Uh, I used to do it on Sunday mornings. And uh, Bernie had originally said, it's like you're washing their little faces and you're keeping things lubricated in there. And I used to get loads of worm uh, leachate draining from the bottom, not realizing that it was probably part worm we. And I would use that um, as a pretty much a 10 to one on my plants. So now let's discuss Worm leachate is a term often used to refer to the liquid that is produced if we add water to the top of our worm farm and then collect what comes out the bottom. This water may be rainwater that's uh, added into your worm farm or it may be water you add from a watering can or hose. As the water percolates through the worm farm, it collects worm we and the finer particles from the worm castings. Leaching good stuff from your worm farm is a great way to harvest nutrients and humus that can go straight into the garden. We find pouring a 10 liter, well, 10 liter watering can through a tumbleweed worm farm will give you a something uh, le worm leachate that's ready to use in your garden. Now they're using it ready to use. They're not breaking it down. I did uh, dilute mine. So that tells you those two terms. Now I want to turn you around and take you outside to where I have my other little setup. You can say, good morning, Santa. Okay, so out here is where I make my worm Tea, truly tea. When we think of tea, we think of something like a kettle, something that brews, something that percolates, something that bubbles, right? We think of the heat. Now, worm tea is just a little different than that. AJ liked my uh, artwork, which was really poor, wasn't it? But I was trying to do it <laughs> on a slippery surface. Um, I add... Uh, five gallons of water. I have a five gallon bucket here and I add really about four gallons of water to it. And then I have a mesh bag that I go ahead and add castings into that bag. I have a piece of wood that hangs across the top, just a branch, and my bag of worm castings hangs in that four gallons of water, bringing it almost up to the top with that probably four pounds of worm castings, five gallon, five pounds, whatever. And I, to that, I add a tablespoon of unsulfured molasses. Please make sure it's unsulfured. If it's sulfured, it'll kill the worms. So I've been told. I put in, I have, this is a, um, a fish aquarium bubbler is, is the main purpose from it and it has little bubbler rocks. Uh, I think I paid $14 for it. I don't have the box right there with me, but I did get it on Amazon. And I let that go for 24 to 48 hours. And then I take out the castings and I let those drain. And then I um, pour it through a filter. And, and again, it's like a nylon filter you could uh, it's, it's finer than nylons, um, but I pour that into my, my containers here. I have uh, four or five uh, gallon jugs, and I pour that in there, and then I use that at a ratio of uh, a 10 to 1, and I get great results. Sometimes I, I put it on um, 
with, you know, just pouring it on my uh, plants. And then sometimes I do a uh, foliar spray and uh, spray it on. I can do both, actually. It's mild enough. It's like using ivory soap. It's mild enough that you can use it on just about anything. And uh, as a foliar spray, it's not going to burn your, your plants. I think you could probably use it in a more concentrated fashion, but I don't. So uh, that was it. I just wanted to give you a quick little read there. I hope I didn't hold anybody too long. And I hope I explained this well enough that uh, if you wanted to go online and look up Tumbleweed as a company and see what all they have to offer, uh, I think you can buy them uh, most of their products on Amazon. But um, it's also a company that's been in, in business for, I think, probably 30 years. Uh, the tumble, the uh, can of worms was first designed in 1996. I bought it in 2009. They've come out with um, new and improved uh, things. But anyway, uh, that was it. I didn't want to hold you any longer. Uh, I hope I could uh, impart a little uh, knowledge that maybe you didn't know. And uh, I'm sure if there's anybody out there that wants to correct me, you'll surface and, and be sure to tell me in no uncertain terms. So anyway, I um, hope you'll come over and, and subscribe and visit my channel and come see me often. Uh, take care, everybody. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.